Hello and gents, welcome to Reacts and this is Quantum Computers Explained, Limits of Human Technology by the channel Kuz Gazat in a nutshell. What are the limits of human technology? Can we somehow avoid them? This is where quantum computers become very interesting. Yeah, quantum computers. I only have basic knowledge of, of this. Uh, I don't know detail about this, obviously. Uh, they're really damn interesting. Of course, I have basic knowledge. But uh, I, the basic way I can uh, talk about quantum computers, if I'm not mistaken, obviously, I guess we'll learn in this video, is that uh, your normal computers, chips and everything, obviously became reality when we discovered you know, quantum mechanics. But basically, uh, that manipulates uh, them and you know, uses them in a certain way. Quantum computers literally uses the properties, principal properties of quantum mechanics, entanglement and superpositions. So uh, basically in your, you know, basic physics, how when you play a song that could be seen as, you know, uh, multiple waves with different frequency banded together. Same way in superposition, you could see two different, I guess, uh, type of, uh, you know, state tangled together. So, uh, you know, um, the, the best, ex best experiment for this is, I guess, double slit experiment. So that's what superposition is. So this works in the same way, qubits, basically, instead of bits. Quantum uh, computers are supposedly so powerful that the difference between uh, com quantum computers and supercomputers is even greater than the computers that we had, you know, decades ago during the Apollo program and what we have now. I mean, during the Apollo program, the computers that we had were not powerful, more powerful than, I guess, the, the greeting cards that we have today. They have less power than the greeting cards that we have today. That's just ridiculous to think. And, you know, the supercomputers, that's just ridiculously high scale. So difference between those two things, I think, uh, you know, difference between supercomputer and quantum computer is even greater than difference between those two things. So I can't even process how powerful would that be. But that is just ridiculous. Yeah, uh, if, if there's going to be a powerful AI, I think it's going to use quantum computers. Now, we are not smarter and faster than our average computers, let alone supercomputers. So imagine quantum computers and AI that would use that. And if that AI suddenly decide that, you know, we are expendable, I don't know if we can fight that AI. I don't know. This is just scary. But yeah, quantum computers, that's just next level technology. So yeah, it's going to be a fun video. I reacted to quite a few Kuzgazad videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cars. There's a playlist I created for it. Kuzgazad reacts and something like that. Check out the playlist too, like Oli Sarkash, the production, internet historian, real life floors, EGP Grey. And yeah, let's watch this one. For most of our history, human technology consisted of our brains, fire, and sharp sticks. While fire and sharp sticks became power plants and nuclear weapons, the biggest upgrade has happened to our brains. Since the 1960s, the power of our brain machines has kept growing exponentially, allowing computers to get smaller and more powerful at the same time. But this process is about to meet its physical limits. Computer parts are approaching the size of an atom, to understand why this is a problem, we have to clear up some basics. And yeah, now there are new processors are uh, coming a Snapdragon mobile processor, which is says five NM processors. I'm like, how small is that gonna get? There's going to be a limit to that. A computer is made up of very simple components doing very simple things, representing data, the means of processing it, and control mechanisms. Computer chips contain modules, which contain logic gates, which contain transistors. A transistor is the simplest form of a data processor in computers, basically a switch that can either block or open the way for information coming through. This information is made up of bits, which can be set to either 0 or 1. Combinations of several bits are used to represent more complex information. Transistors are combined to create logic gates, which still do very simple stuff. For example, an AND gate sends an output of 1 if all of its inputs are 1, and an output of 0 otherwise. Combinations of logic gates finally form meaningful modules, say for adding two numbers. Once you can add, you can also multiply, and once you can multiply, you can basically do anything. Since all basic operations are literally simpler than first grade math, you can imagine a computer as a group of seven-year-olds answering really basic math questions. A large enough bunch of them could compute anything from astrophysics to Zelda. However, with parts getting tinier and tinier, quantum physics are making things tricky. In a nutshell, a transistor is just an electric switch. 
Electricity is electrons moving from one place to another, so a switch is a passage that can block electrons from moving in one direction. Today, a typical scale for transistors is 14 nanometers, which is about eight times less than the HIV virus's diameter and 500 times smaller than a red blood cell's. As transistors are shrinking to the size of only a few atoms, electrons may just transfer themselves to the other side of a blocked passage via a process called quantum tunneling. In the quantum realm, physics works quite differently from the predictable ways we're used to, and traditional computers just stop. <laughs> quantum realm is, realm is just fucking scary. Seriously, the, the most of the things that we we'll, we'll learn in the you know basic physics and the limitations just not there. There are no limitations. I mean, there are, but you have lots of basic limitations that you know of. That is just like common sense to you. Like, yeah, obviously, this... this this uh, goes beyond laws of physics. Suddenly, it's not a thing in the quantum realm. It's just scary. Making sense. We are approaching a real physical barrier for our technological progress. To solve this problem, scientists are trying to use these unusual quantum properties to their advantage by building quantum computers. In normal computers, bits are the smallest units of information. Quantum computers use qubits, qubits which can also be set to one of two values. A qubit can be any two-level quantum system, such as a spin in a magnetic field or a single photon. Zero and one are this system's possible states, like the photon's horizontal or vertical polarization. In the quantum world, the qubit doesn't have to be in just one of those, it can be in any proportions of both states at once. This is called superposition. But as soon as you test its value, say by sending the photon through a filter, it has to decide to be either vertically or horizontally polarized. So as long as it's unobserved, the qubit is in a superposition of probabilities for 0 and 1, and you can't predict which it will be. But the instant you measure it, it collapses into one of the definite states. Superposition is a game changer. Four classical bits can be in one of two to the power of... I mean, this all sounds like uh, out there things, like, hmm, is this even going to be possibilities? But there are already quantum computers exist. IBM has them. I think in 2016 they announced it or something like that. Google has that. And now China is claiming that they have even the more powerful one. Extremely fast and biggest powerful quantum computer there is. So, yeah, it's... it's Pretty soon, in a few decades, we computer quantum computers is just going to be a thing, like how supercomputers are, where people just use them. And I'm pretty sure the results of them is going to spearhead lots of things, lots of technology quite forward. That we won't even realize that this technology became such a big thing and so successful because of quantum computers. Four different configurations at a time. That's 16 possible combinations out of which you can use just one. Four qubits in superposition, however, can be in all of those 16 combinations at once. This number grows exponentially with each extra qubit. 20 of them can already store a million values in parallel. A really weird and unintuitive property qubits can have is entanglement, a close connection that makes each of the qubits react to a change in the other's state instantaneously, no matter how far they are apart. This means that when measuring just one entangled... That is the most scary thing about entanglement. I mean, uh, one, par one part of the particle could be in a completely def different part of the space. Another part of that same, uh, you know, entangled particle, particle, yeah, could be in the completely opposite side of the space. Like, say, when the, you know, hundreds of thousands of light years away. But... Uh, the, you know, one part would suddenly realize if something happens to or, you know, anything cha changes happens to the other part faster than the speed of light. And that's the weird and scary thing, like nothing can be faster than speed of light. So how are they communicating that fast? So, yeah, I don't remember exactly, you know, which video I saw on that, but that just blew my mind. Like, God damn, this ent entanglement is something like quantum uh, quantum area is just it's just ridiculous. I mean, all the laws of physics that you know of, lots of times those don't even apply. Qubit, you can directly deduce properties of its partners without having to look. Qubit manipulation is a mind bender as well. A normal logic gate gets a simple set of inputs and produces one definite output. A quantum gate manipulates an input of superpositions, rotates probabilities and produces another superposition as its output. 
So a quantum computer sets up some qubits, applies quantum gates to entangle them and manipulate probabilities, and finally measures the outcome, collapsing superpositions to an actual sequence of zeros and ones. What this means is that you get the entire lot of calculations that are possible with your setup all done at the same time. Ultimately, you can only measure one of the results, and it will only probably be the one you want, so you may have to double-check and try again. But by cleverly exploiting superposition and entanglement, this can be exponentially more efficient than would ever be possible on a normal computer. So while quantum computers will probably not replace our home computers, in some areas they are vastly superior. One of them is data. Well, not now. Maybe in the future, extremely far in the future. Why not? When it becomes, uh, you know, uh, more, uh, you know, understood technology, more easy to produce technology. Why the hell not? I'd like to play a game in quantum computer, why not? Searching. <laughs> to find something in a database, a normal computer may have to test every single one of its entries. Quantum algorithms need only the square root of that time, which for large databases is a huge difference. The most famous use of quantum computers is ruining IT security. Right now, your browsing, email and banking data is being kept secure by an encryption system in which you give everyone a public key to encode messages only you can decode. The problem is that this public key can actually be used to calculate your secret private key. Luckily, doing the necessary math on any normal computer would literally take years of trial and error. But a quantum computer with exponential speed up could do it in a breeze. Another really exciting new use. Yeah, I could hear a hacker getting an erection right there. Is simulations. Simulations of the quantum world are very intense on resources, and even for bigger structures such as molecules, they often lack accuracy. So why not simulate quantum physics with actual quantum physics? Quantum simulations could provide new insights on proteins that might revolutionize medicine. Right now, we don't know if quantum computers will be just a very specialized tool or a big revolution for humanity. We have no idea where the limits of technology are, and there's only one way to find out. This video... Look man, computers were a big thing in our life, basically. Computers change a lot of things, so even more powerful computer will surely change lots of things. Will solve lots of issues of the world, even accelerate technology, so of course it's going to be a big thing. It's going to help out in a big, in big way, especially AIs. So yeah. Alright people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out the reaction I did, there's a link in the description, check out the cards, all the playlists, check out the end cards, and I'll see you next time.